Well, the local Democratic Party has one of its, uh, I'd say, you know, local superstars coming back into the conversation, which is going to be really interesting. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. He used, uh, he used to be, uh, you know, the chair, you know, and uh, he's run for big office before, but he is a part of the fabric of the Democratic Party in Rhode Island. Bill Lynch is my guest tonight. He's now the new senior advisor to the party. It's almost like um, back to the future. Uh, I would think that there are a lot of people inside the Democratic Party that feel really good about uh, a gentleman who is as glib, articulate, and feisty as the party has ever seen. And uh, he and I are here to uh, rekindle old fun working relationships, so stay tuned for that. In fact, I'm going to kind of skip most of what's going on with the rundown uh, tonight simply because I want to take some quality time with Bill. Of course, uh, we got to talk about the national, the local situation. The uh, national polling data looks this way right now. Hillary's uh, lead, at least in the latest Monmouth poll, has shrunk to seven points. Um, I would think that Hillary Clinton and probably Bill will tell us that, you know what, they'd l if you told them that at this time of the year, da da da, if we were a seven point lead, we'd be happy. But in that same moment poll, she had a 13 point lead. Uh, things that are nagging, obviously, are the email situation, the Clinton Foundation, and she needed this one like a hole in the head. Hillary Clinton pressed on with fundraising in the Hamptons Monday. Amid yet another distraction to her presidential campaign. Yesterday, Clinton's closest aide, Huma Abedin, announced her split from husband Anthony Weiner. Hours after the New York Post published a lewd photo he allegedly sent to a woman as his toddler son lay next to him. The latest scandal provided new fodder for Donald Trump, who used the incident to blast Clinton's judgment. Uma Abedin has access to classified information. How Hillary got away with that one, nobody will ever know. But to think that it's very likely that much of this information Anthony Weiner would know about. Trump is scheduled to deliver a major speech on immigration in Arizona tomorrow while Clinton addresses veterans in Cincinnati. Right, so uh, here's the uh, local headline that everyone said, oh, look at this, Mr. Lynch is here to talk national, local politics, Democratic Party. Good to see you, my old friend. How Thank are you? Thank you, all right, nice to be back. What are you doing this for? <laughs> are you nuts? What's the matter, it just keeps like a giant sucking sound, the politics of, uh, uh, of Rhode Island and the country? Listen, this is Rhode Island, I love the political aspect of it. Um, I'm a lifelong Rhode Islander, as you know. Uh, I live in Pawtucket. I work in Providence. <coughs> work at a law firm with my brother. So, it's never like I've been out of you know the political aspect of things. I do some work at the state house, and I see all these different office holders on a regular basis. And I offered to get a little bit more actively involved now that we're into the election cycle. Um, and as a consequence of my offer, uh, it was accepted by the leadership, um, the speaker, the Senate president, the governor, and others. Um, and that's why I'm here on a volunteer basis, because I believe very strongly in this election cycle, particularly, but not limited to the presidential election. Well, so. you've got an interesting little dynamic. Uh, remind everybody, I mean, you were the chair of the party for how long? 12 years. Yeah, it was a long <laughs> run. And, and I think I'm still, by far, the longest serving chair of either party in Rhode Island history. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it, it, it is what it is. And your run for office did not go the way you wanted it to. No. I mean, I ran for Congress. I, it was one of the most exciting, energetic, fun things I've ever done. Um, but I got, like a lot of people, into a crowded primary race uh, with then Mayor Cicilline, who prevailed. Um, to his credit, he ran a good campaign. I had my shot. Uh, unlike a lot of people, I don't have any hard feelings about it. I'm happy that I did it. I did it the way I wanted to do it. Uh, and I've always believed, and still do, that we get the government that, you know, people vote for and there are things particularly for me that I've been very engaged in outside of politics I think I have a pretty good balance in that regard both personal and professional um, and so now I'm happy to be back spending a little bit more time with you that was really one of the main reasons <laughs> why I wanted to get back involved <laughs> you're too much what'd you learn from losing that race um, you learn a lot of things. I think you always learn more. It's been my experience as I get older that the older I get, the smarter my father was, I guess is the way I think about it. And I learned for one thing, you learn who your real friends are uh, as opposed to those that might sort of be just passing through or jumping on the train as it passes through the station. 
Um, but you also learn about, about, a lot about people, about interaction. I learned a lot about, obviously, campaigning. Um, it was great. I mean, I would do it again. Um, I'm a competitive person. I grew up in a competitive household. I look at it, the analogy a lot like sports. You know, I grew up as a basket, competitive basketball player. And you play hard. You play by the rules. Um, but there can only be one winner. Um, doesn't necessarily mean the other people are losers. But at the end of the day, only one person can be successful. Uh, there have been a lot of great people who have run for office and lost all over the country and in Rhode Island. And they've gone on to contribute and stay active. And that's what I've tried to do. So the Democratic Party <coughs> welcomes you back as a uh, an advisor slash spokes guy. Do you end up being the go-to person for response now when media has inquiries about what's happening both nationally and locally? I did offer that whenever you have a question that you no, should come call on, me. Seriously, are you, I, think, are you, I think that... Because I will tell you this, the reason I, you know, put a, 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 a Joe McNamara headline. Uh, you know, Joe McNamara seems to be a good enough gentleman. He's a state representative and he's the party chair, but he is um, inept when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know how many times he's been invited here and half accepted an invitation to share uh, space with uh, party chairs on the other side. Uh, I see, I, I don't know what his, what his, uh, his problem is, but he has, uh, I think, been completely ineffective in, in being a voice for the party. Uh, well, was he, at, was he gasping for air and looking yeah, for some I, help? Yeah, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't put it that way. I've, I've known Joe for, God, probably over 20 years, and I've been in regular contact with him since he uh, took over as state chair, but one of the things people don't often realize, and I'm not saying this because I was the chair for 12 years, but it, it can be a time-consuming, challenging task. And Joe also, remember, unlike me, uh, is a state representative and has an election this fall of his own in his district. I never had to worry about that part of the, of the office. So I think that I'm looking forward to working with Joe, not as opposed to or in place of. He and I are in regular contact, and I hope that I'll be able to supplement his efforts so that he has a little bit more time to campaign in his district. Who's really running the show for the Democrats this time around? I mean, there's, there's, there's no doubt in my mind a uh, quite a divide uh, between the Speaker of the House and the Governor, uh, even the Senate President. I think the Senate President may be more aligned with the Governor, um, but. You know, it's a big tent, this Democratic Party, and, and not everybody's uh, playing uh, very well in the sandbox right now. Yeah, but it always has been. I mean, you know, I go back to 1998, and really even before that. I mean, I took over as chair in 1998, but even before that, I was pretty actively involved both on a local level and the statewide level. So for most of my adult life, I've been involved in one way or another. And we've always had differences within the party. You know, everybody kind of outside of Rhode Island assumes that because Rhode Island is such a democratic state, that everybody gets along and everybody's on the same page. But as you know, that's not the case. You know, there are a lot of issues where we philosophically within the Democratic Party have people who feel very differently about things. So it can be challenging at times to work through some of that. Um, normally, when you, we go through a campaign cycle like this, I was always of the opinion that the, the higher the office seeker or elected official running, would sort of be the lead of the ticket, and then we would formulate a coordinated campaign effort and sort of work with that person. So this time around, for example, you know, we obviously have a presidential election, and, and, and Hillary Clinton has, you know, some people obviously here in Rhode Island, but the highest people running for office, Rhode Island is running, are, are our congressmen. So ordinarily, and I expect again this time, we'll work closely in those two districts with the congressmen. We don't have obviously statewide offices on the ballot this time around and no U.S. Senate seats. So it really becomes our congressional candidates and then our state senators and reps uh, who, as you can see, are going to have you know, a pretty boisterous, pretty engaged, energetic process. There are some primaries and there will also be some contested general elections. Well, I want to talk about the national scene and get, <coughs> get your perspective and then get, dig into some of the... Uh, um, the developments uh, on the local elections. But since we're talking about the, the challenges that the party has and the tent and all that kind of stuff, there's no doubt in my mind, and I think everyone who's paying attention recognizes, that the Democratic Party feels a real surge from what's called the progressive group, right? Um, and uh, there's a worry, I know, uh, by the House Speaker and, and others who, who, who see themselves a lot more conservatively than um, this, this, this group that is trying to mount a charge here, known as the progressives, uh, they're worried about it. Um, how do you see this whole thing in, in a possible real evolution going on to lean a lot left on fiscal policies, social policies, all that in, in the General Assembly? 
Well, you know what? I, there's always been pressure from the the more progressive wing of the party. Bernie versus, Sanders has certainly put some no, energy. No in this, question right? about it. No question about it. Bernie Sanders ran a great campaign nationally and here in Rhode Island. Worked very hard at it and was successful for a lot of different reasons. And I think that people in general see and have focused on the fact that there's a sense of of unease. There are people that are angry. There are people upset at what they see uh, working or not working for them. Uh, both at the State House and probably even more so in Washington and in, in the Congress. But um, I think that that's presented an opportunity for the progressive wing or whatever you know name you want to put on that side of our party. We've always had a progressive wing of the party. I mean, nobody was, was more recognized. But, not, but, not, not, but not getting the traction that it's getting right now. Probably Bullied not. by I mean, Sanders in part, but there's been, some, there's been some slow creep, and there are dozens of seats right now that are, that are either in play now or will be, and, yeah. and, and there's worry amongst the more conservative wing of the Democratic Party. Well, listen, there's nobody, I don't think, uh, in my uh, last 20 years who's been more closely aligned with the progressive wing, if you want to call it that, of the Democratic Party than Murph York, who was my candidate for governor uh, more than once. So the party, the Democratic Party in Rhode Island has always had a uh, side of it that is termed progressive, um, more liberal perhaps than some of the conservative people who still consider themselves an important part and are an important part of the party. So well, it comes well, down one to policy. Of the it, comes down, it comes down to taxation. It comes down to fees. It comes down to you know truck tolls, plus, plus, plus. It yeah. comes down to all that kind yeah. of stuff. I mean, and that's, a lot and that's what, right and I've now. said to you before, and you used to give me a hard time, that sometimes primaries are good because it gives people a fair opportunity within the party structure to debate uh, and have that dialogue, and certainly in an individual state senate race or state representative race, there's an opportunity for people in a small community to have those kinds of discussions. And then, you know, hopefully what we normally would do is unite behind the person who is victorious in the primary going forward, because then the real differences become apparent, and I'm sure we're going to talk about that, but the differences in November then become the Republican Party with its new standard bearer, Donald Trump versus the Democratic Party in Rhode Island, who will be led by Hillary Clinton. I just wonder how many of you just winced over the standard bearer. Donald Trump will come back and talk about the national scene when we return with Bill Lynch. Stay with us. There has been a steady stream of bigotry coming from him. Of course, uh, that's preceded by comments like this. He also lacks the mental and physical stamina well, uh, obviously that clipped. You caught me. Um, but everyone's seen it anyway. Uh, this uh, presidential race is an enigma. Uh, it is something that I, I, I hope we never have to see again, to be honest with you. I know you're going to make all sorts of supportive statements for, for Hillary Clinton, um, and I expect that to be your role. But I've never seen an election where so many people are so um, disappointed over the choices. I think that's true, honestly. I, I think that there are a lot of different reasons for it, uh, and I think there are very different reasons for the two candidates. Um, I think for Hillary Clinton, who, we, who, as you know, I know personally and got very close to her and Bill Clinton, I think there's a certain amount of, of fatigue, you know, with the Clintons that is almost impossible to avoid altogether when you've been so much in the news and out front for so long that there's just nothing new. There's a certain p perhaps lack of excitement that was you know, it wasn't a problem uh, eight years ago that is now. Uh, but then when you compare that to the reasons that people are so um, disgusted, is really the only word I can think with, uh, obviously with the exception of the died in the world Trump supporters who would vote for him no matter what. But when you look at most people and how they're reacting to the things that Donald Trump just says day after day, uh, it's almost like he has a, a menu or a litany of of groups and peoples that he wants to go out of his way to insult on a daily basis. I think people, as we get closer to November, I, I believe firmly that people are going to start to be much more serious about it and say that this is ridiculous that we even have this guy as, well, no mind is the standard bearer of the Republican no. Party, but a candidate Well, well listen, listen I, I think you're right about Hillary. I, 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 I think the, I, you know, she is a, a well-worn shoe and some people find her comfortable and some people find her completely uncomfortable. See, the difference with me is that Hillary Clinton that I know is, and I agree with Barack Obama, uh, and as you know, I was a Hillary Clinton supporter right to the end eight years ago, but 
the Hillary Clinton that I know, I would agree with the president, is is probably the most, if you just look at her qualifications to be president, the most qualified person maybe who's ever run. She's smart, she's tough, she's sincere, but she's not a great candidate. She just isn't. And, and that was a little bit of the case with Al Gore, as you recall. You know, I was the chairman when Al Gore ran. Al Gore just wasn't a great stump candidate politically. Certainly didn't compare to Bill Clinton. And I think she's got a little bit of a tin ear, don't you? I mean, the the email uh, thing has been uh, horrendously handled. The the Clinton Foundation right now, uh, although I think it's doing some tremendous work worldwide, probably should have had Bill stepping aside on on a more accelerated basis, at least on a formal level. Um, They put themselves in a position to get get criticized there. You know, the Wiener thing is, I I don't know, that's an anomaly. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, do I hold Hillary Clinton responsible? Okay. for her, her, her protege's husband? No, but, you know, I think Uma's probably said, listen, if I want to survive in this business, this guy's got to go anyway, right? But, I mean, that, that's a far cry from Donald Trump, Trump now standing up and saying that he has serious concerns about Hillary Clinton's capacity to be president because of her friend's soon to be ex husband's strange behavior. I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. It's it's asinine, but it's the kind of thing people now are becoming to expect from, from Trump. Well you have seen some trending though. Here's a poll, I mean we, we showed the headline before, but here's kind of the breakdown. What was a thirteen point spread in this particular poll from Monmouth only a couple of weeks ago is now down to seven. Um, I predicted you'd say, well, if it was, you know, if you told me a year ago that we'd be up seven at this time, we'd be happy. That's probably gonna be your answer, right? Actually, I hate to disappoint you, but that's not my answer. Oh. But my answer is this, and I would say to those that are watching, many of them probably know this, national polls like that are, can, can be somewhat misleading. And the reason for that is that we don't elect presidents in the United States by, the popular, by vote. popular vote. If yeah. we did, Al Gore would be president, not George Bush. So the answer is that really, if you want to see where Hillary Clinton is today as as her race unfolds with Donald Trump. And electoral votes. That you have to look state by state at the Electoral College, and if you want to, polls in each of those states. Well, she's she's got some problems, because a a poll this morning I I, I saw that Ohio is kind of tightened up to a near dead heat, and Pennsylvania is is only a couple, three points where it was larger. The, The national polls I don't think are particularly effective, like the one you just showed. The Electoral College and the polls in individual states, particularly the battleground states, Hillary right now is doing better than anybody would have expected a few years ago. If you want to compare where she is today with where Barack Obama was as opposed to Mitt Romney, she is better in almost every battleground state than Obama, President Obama was, and he won handily. So I expect that that will tighten up. As you know, we've had this discussion. Almost every election, whether it's a statewide election, presidential election, Congress, U.S. Senate, they tend to get closer as Election Day approaches, and this will too. And there are certain states, whether we want to admit it or not, this country is so divided politically, if you look at a map, you know, the infamous red and blue map, we're a divided country. That's a whole, maybe another issue for another day. But there are certain states that Donald Trump will win, as any Republican would win, and there are certain states that Hillary Clinton will win because she's a Democrat. The difference is that in those states that are in play, including some Georgia, uh, South Carolina, other states where people would have said Hillary would have no chance, she's either within the margin of error or winning in states that nobody gave her a chance in. So electorally, when you break down this race state by state, I like where Hillary Clinton well, is Well, I right think now. she probably sits locked at 269 right now if you take a look <coughs> at the numbers. And so it's really going to fall. Florida is the whole kit and caboodle. And Ohio, of course, is important. And she's, she's lost a little ground there in Ohio, reportedly. But uh, this whole thing will be fascinating as we go. I'm guessing that you'll be here for debate analysis and all that kind of stuff, which begins on September 26th. You've got to figure that's going to be at Donnybrook. Uh, who God knows what the hell is going to happen. Excuse my French uh, uh, in that situation. Yeah, I think the TV stations that are covering it are happy because I'm sure the viewership will be significant. Um, who knows? I mean, I don't know on a daily basis what's going to come out of Donald Trump's mouth next. And there's a certain, I have to admit, there's a certain appeal to that, uh, except if the time, when the time comes and someone has to vote, is this a person who I think has the capacity and the temperament and the knowledge and the ability to be the president of the United States. Well, there's States. a lot of anger the out there. No. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of blind anger. There's a lot of legitimate anger. Yeah. And so, you know, people might. Who knows? When we come back, we'll talk about what's happening on the local scene. Stay with us. 
All righty, so this is Speaker of the House, uh, you know, District 45. It is amazing the way uh, democracy works, all the, the, the beauty and the warts of it. Uh, he's elected by 75 people in that room, but he's got to get elected by a few thousand in Cranston first. He's got a couple of Republicans who are vying uh, to run against him. Do you think the Speaker is concerned about this race for re-election? I don't think he's any more concerned than he has been every time that he's run from the first time he ran and won and then got reelected. I mean, look, at every um, senator or rep, and I have 12 years of experience having served as chair uh, and been through a lot of campaigns, every senator and rep of either party, frankly, who has an opponent is concerned as to whether or not they're going to get reelected. It's human nature. So the only people right now, man, men or women at the State House, who are not concerned are those that don't have an opponent. Um, well, everybody else is concerned. Except for guys like this. Uh, John DeSimone uh, was highlighted along with his uh, opponent in the, uh, in the paper yesterday. The headline uh, is, is there that Kevin can post. Uh, uh, this this uh, young lady is, is running against him, and uh, he suggests that uh, she doesn't know him because she hasn't been in the district. The cockiness that uh, some of these established Republicans exhibit, uh, even inside the Democratic Party, is nauseating. Well, John would be upset if you called him an established Republican at any Did point. Did I say Republican? <laughs> yes. I, meant, I meant Democrat. But I know Thanks for met. catching me. I know Thanks for met. catching me. Uh, but, well, look, I mean, John DeSimone has a, an opponent in an election. So he is going, like anybody else, he's going to point out weaknesses, uh, that he thinks he sees in his opponent. I just like to see a little. I, I like from leadership. I like to see a little more magnanimity in, 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 in the way the, the way the politics runs around here. There's a cockiness that people are offended by about this state. Uh, I don't know that that's going to make the Republican surge, but yeah. there's there's a disrest on both sides of the aisle because of that attitude. But I don't think, frankly, pointing out that your opponent in a primary is relatively new to the district that you've been, lived in your entire life. That seems to me, even as a former chair, to be a fair. Thing for people to be aware of. That's all. Hmm. You're good at this. You haven't lost. Uh, you haven't lost your fastball. I don't know. Um, I'm guessing that in your new role as senior advisor and and I wanted uh, to be special advisor. I did. think because my hair is getting gray, did. they made it senior advisor. Did, did they? <laughs> I don't know. We're, we're both <laughs> suffering from that problem. But I'm guessing that you'll come and have discourse with the Republicans and battle it out like you always have. I mean, that's the fun I, of it, right? I, I look forward to it. I, I hope so. This wouldn't be very much fun if we weren't doing that. All right. Um, your prediction for November, I'm guessing, is Hillary Clinton wins. Does Gina Raimondo, I only got 20 seconds, does she go with her or does she sit it out and, and try to get reelected? I, I think Gina Raimondo is here for the duration to keep building on what she's doing. The duration of the four years or the eight years? Hopefully eight years. Um, I think she's got the state again moving in the right direction. I think she wants to finish really? the job. You think truck tolls are moving in the right direction? Better than having every single taxpayer in Rhode Island have to pay to fix our bridges and, and our roads, which are one of the worst in the nation. I mean, that's the alternative. My neighbors don't want to pay it all on, on their own. They'd like to see some trucks from yeah. out of state paying The people in Pawtucket are for tolls, is that what you're telling me? Sure, if it, if it helps. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. Bill Lynch, he's back. Last word when I come back, stay with us. Uh, I, I don't know, this is, I, is this a tragic story, a crazy story? I don't know what this is. Show this uh, real quick. Uh, lightning strike kills more than 300 reindeer in Norway. You know, God bless the reindeer. Uh, now you can prediction you know what? That. You're supposed to be off the show, but go ahead. Just the throw him in there. The this the is Bill Lynch still hanging around. By the end of the day, Donald Trump's going to blame Hillary Clinton for that <laughs> lightning strike in those reindeer in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd get that line in. I got to go. We'll see you on the radio tomorrow at 3 and back here with a congressional candidate, correct? You'll have to wait to see tomorrow night. Good night. Thanks for watching.